Hi, my name is Sholem Patel. I'm from Duke University, and I'm also one of the Grouper developers. I'm going to be talking about how to administer the Grouper UI, and this is part one. In this part, I'll start off by talking about how to download the Grouper UI, then I'll talk about the app server, and also about Apache if you choose to run it. Also, I'll talk about how to configure for authentication and for logging. So regarding the download, you can get all of the Grouper packages from the Grouper web server, which is linked from here. Um, that includes the Grouper UI as well as the other components like the Grouper API and the Grouper web services. Also, if you're using the Grouper installer, it will download most of these packages for you. However, as of Grouper 2.1, the Grouper installer is more of a quick start. Also, if you want to use your own Tomcat, um, instance, then you would want to download the package on your own rather than using the Grouper installer. As a quick demo, I will download the Grouper UI and get it set up. So I could use a web browser to download the Grouper UI using the link that I had on the slide, uh, but for demo purposes, I'm just going to use curl in this example. So after downloading, um, it downloads as a tarball file, so you would have to extract it. The first thing you'd want to do after extracting it is to copy the build.properties.template file uh, to the build.properties file. And when you open that up, the first thing you'd want to check is the grouper.folder setting. Um, in this case, um, I have it set correctly. This should point to the location of your Grouper API on your server. So now I can run ant dist, which will compile the Java files and get it ready to deploy. You could also run ant war if you want, which would basically do the same thing, except it will also um, produce a war file that you can deploy if you prefer to deploy that way. Um, here you can see that the ant is succeeded uh, by this line here, built successful. So the Grouper UI is deployed on an application server that supports the Java Servlet API. Um, at the moment, we do most of our testing on Tomcat 6. Once you build the Grouper UI, you would deploy it like you deploy any Java web app. Um, if you have a WAR file, you can deploy it into the Tomcat web apps directory, or you can modify the server.xml file to deploy it as an exploded WAR if you want. Uh, in my case, I've got my Tomcat server.xml file set up with the following line that I'm highlighting, which I added. Um, which allows it to be deployed as an exploded war. Um, you can do the same thing, just be sure to set the doc base correctly uh, with the correct location. Also, if you have multiple servers where you have the group for UI um, and you have a load balancer, then you'd want to make sure that you have persistence set up at the load balancer. Uh, so if a user goes to one of the backend servers initially, all further requests that they make should continue to go to the same backend server. You can use a web server like Apache to front end your Tomcat instance if you want. Um, this could be useful if you have multiple Tomcats, for instance. Um, for example, you may want to deploy the Grouper UI and the Grouper web services on different Tomcat instances. Or maybe you have an existing web server that already has Tomcat with uh, other Java web applications, and you want to deploy Grouper on the same web server, and you want to use uh, a separate Tomcat for it. Also, using Apache can help with authentication. Um, and if you use Apache with Tomcat, then you can just use ModJK or ModProxy HAP. So now I'll talk a little bit about authentication. Authentication in the Grouper UI is handled by a filter, 
and the filter is edu.internet2.middleware.grouper.ui.loginCheckFilter. This filter basically allows authentication to succeed if remote user is set. And remote user should either be the subject ID of the user or one of their subject identifiers. You could use your own filter if you want, or you can add additional filters to customize the authentication behavior. But by default, this works easily with the Tomcat users.xml file. And also, by default, it's easy to integrate with basic authentication and uh, with Shibboleth. So if you want to do authentication using um, basic auth with either LDAP or Kerberos, for instance, uh, then that should be easy to set up as long as you use the right Apache modules. So as a quick demo, I will show how to set up authentication with the Tomcat users.xml file. So I'm going to open up my Tomcat users.xml file and towards the bottom I added the two lines that I'm highlighting. The first basically defines a role grouper underscore user and the second defines a user grouper system uh, with the password private. Uh, that's a part of this world. So now since I've already configured my server.xml to um, deploy the grouper UI as an exploded war, I can just start up uh, Tomcat now. And while that starts, I'm going to tail the Tomcat log file uh, to see when it finishes starting, and it has finished. So now in a web browser, I will go to uh, the Grouper UI. And I'll click on the login link. And now it's asking me for a username and password, and this will be based off of what you have in the Tomcat users.xml file. And there I'm logged in as Grouper System. So if you want to set up authentication using Shilboleth, that's also fairly um, easy to get set up. Um, there are only a few steps that you would have to do. Uh, first of all, you'd have to modify the Tomcat authentication uh, setting to false in the server.xml file for your connector. Um, and I've shown an example of that here. And you would also do this if you're using uh, basic authentication. Also, in the web.xml file for the grouper UI, uh, you would remove the security role, the security constraint, and the login config sections. And finally, you would configure your Shibboleth SP uh, to protect the path that's being used by the grouper UI, which by default is slash grouper. All of the um, grouper projects use log4j for logging. Uh, you can easily customize what you want logged and where, uh, which includes files and email. By default, the Grouper UI uses the Grouper API logging configuration, uh, but you can modify the build out properties file for the Grouper UI to use a separate log4j file. And let me do that here. So to do that, you would copy the log4j.template.properties file to the log4j.properties file. Then in the build.properties file, um, you would set use.local.log4j to true. You can set where you want log files to go to. Then if you want errors to be emailed, uh, you can easily do that. Um, you can set the to address for the email. Uh, you can also set the from address. And you can set the SMTP host.
and then you could run add dist again, um, which will redeploy the grouper UI um, with the updated uh, configuration. Also, to further customize login, you can open up the log4j.properties file um, that we copied and make changes in there. So that's all for this training. Um, there are three links on this slide. The first link will take you to the main grouper page, which has a bunch of information, including uh, the wiki, which has a lot of documentation, um, and the download links. Uh, the second link is to the Grouper demo server um, where you can go to to actually try out the Grouper uh, UI. And the third link is to the online training. The next video in the Grouper online training is the Grouper UI part two. Thanks.